Ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is scheduled for one fall. Dude, I'm not reading the rest of this. You don't even pay me. Just click your button, start the show. Hi guys, welcome back to The Gimmick Table. It is our fourth episode. I am your host, Matt. In the studio with me today is Bats. Joe is still asphyxiated from all the pine saw he's been huffing, getting ready for the table challenge. Anyways, things have been going well since our launch. Uh, A lot of downloads coming in, a lot of reviews on iTunes, just a few people who have been really pushing us. RJ, Larry, and Wayne, thank you guys. You are awesome. I want to just give you a shout out on the episode because I know that you'll be listening. We still got our contest going. You guys can go over to gimmicktablepod.com, enter over there. We got three running right now. Just click on the link for all the contests and you will be good to go. And Bats, our guest today is a friend of yours from high school, so we're going to go ahead and let you introduce him. Let's hope you don't fuck it up. Yes, so this is my buddy, George. George again. And he is down in Austin, Texas right now, but he comes from Vestal, New York, with where I grew up. We went to high school and middle school together, and we got him on the show tonight. This is going to be pretty interesting, because I'm sure there's some stories he remembers about me that I don't remember. This hopefully will be a fun time, but Matt, take it away. How's it going today, George? Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. No problem, man. This is going to be pretty sweet. Yeah, not too much on our end. Uh, Definitely appreciate you coming on the show uh we love what you guys do uh andrew introduced me to some of your wrestling matches and i really liked you know the whole little guy against goliath image you had going on at the time i know things have changed a little bit since then yeah you're a little bigger <laughs> now i don't really have much of a choice man genetics man am, you can't i am not big <laughs> but you you pull off you know kind of not being that atypical wrestler and, and being able to hang with a lot of those bigger guys pretty well because some of the matches that i saw you move and like a guy that's no different looking than the rest of them. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, actually. You're, uh, you're... I'm just trying to make my mark, you know. I don't want to be like everybody else. What fun is that? Exactly. And you have, you might, you can even use the fact that you have a different look than everybody else that can really sell you in a way that, you know, not everybody else can be sold. There's a story there that not everybody else can have. That's it, man. That's what it's all about. So we'll start this Bridging off. Out. Oh, sorry. We'll start this off go. like we always do. Um, what influenced you to be a professional wrestler? Oh, uh, dude, that'll have to tell you ever, ever, ever. Since, uh, I don't know, at least six or seven years old, you know, I, I constantly talked about wanting to do it while we were growing up um, since, you know, since I've known him. Vouch for me, that. No, definitely. Ever since I know you, you've been a huge fan of wrestling. And you're actually, yeah, I mean, the only reason I probably ever watched wrestling in high school was because we were friends. Yeah, I mean... It's been my thing forever. You know, once I graduated college, I was like, you know what? This dream's not dead. Let's, uh, let's see what I can do. I mean, and, um, you know, I, I I was a huge CZW fan. I mean, I of course, I still am, but I didn't really see myself training anywhere else. Uh, at the time I started, Drew Gulak of the WWE was the head trainer. You know, I, I couldn't have been uh, trained by a better uh, group of people. You know, it was, it's dream fulfillment for me. Yeah, no, that's for sure, because you definitely always said you were going to be a professional wrestler, so you're fucking... Yeah, man, I was, thinking, I was thinking about my senior yearbook the other day, and, like, <laughs> 75% of the comments that I remember are like, yeah, good luck with wrestling, and, you know, from 05 when we graduated, I didn't start... I had my first match in December of 2014. So it was like a giant window. I could have disappointed a lot of people that haven't talked to me since 2005, but I didn't. No, I mean, I I picked it up right away as soon as I saw it on like Facebook. I noticed it right away. I was like, no way, he's he's actually doing it now. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I went to our uh, our reunion back in uh, 2015. Everyone's like, yeah, so what's up, man? How you been? Yeah, that thing I never shut up about? Totally doing it. And I sold a couple of shirts and 8 by 10s to randoms. <laughs> Why not? And to make my mark. Exactly. But think about how many kids at six years old through their entire teenage years said, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. This is what I want to do. And how many actually go out there and do it? So kudos, it, man. You know, kudos to you for never losing that boyhood dream because a lot of us Thanks. just end up you know working nine to fives for the rest of our lives and forgetting about all the things that we wanted to be when we were growing up and you know that's why i I have no idea what you're talking about yeah you love working at dss so how did how did you go from (laughs) fan to training how did you how did you end up with czw down at their dojo 
Well, I mean, that was like my company of choice coming out of high school. Like they were the first indie I really got into. You know, aside from WWE, CZW was like my shit. There was an old forum that I'm not going to plug just because, you know, I don't know if it still exists. But uh, they did tape trading, and uh, I had never seen, like, a proper death match, just, like, hardcore at ECW. Because uh, when I was a senior in high school is when, like, ECW's, like, revival uh, came about. Not so much, like, the TV show, but, like, the, the Rise and Fall ECW came out on DVD. And, like, I used to watch that in, like, the cafeterias, and I was like, well, hardcore wrestling seems like, like decent enough storytelling, and, you know, people call it garbage, and I don't really get that so it got me into czw off this forum and i'd never seen it like a proper death match so i got tournament of death too i turned it on one of the first people i see is this guy named sick nick mondo badawini you know I, I, you know I, that name right off the bat i drew dude. you a picture of him you did you you I wanted a picture it. of him so yeah uh so i saw sick nick mondo and the necro butcher two separate matches on this dvd well, this is storytelling. I mean, they just happen to be using weapons in a different medium. And really, I just kind of became a fan uh, of them from then. Um, and, you know, it lasted from 05 to 2014. I decided to uh, finally, you know, make the jump. And it, it was pretty seamless. I mean, obviously, something like that's not easy, but the decision in... Uh, what school to attend and who to train with. You know, I never really uh, thought twice about it. That's just my home. Good for you. I'm glad that you were able to kind of just, you know, you knew what you liked, you went out there, you got it. And yeah, I have to agree with you because some of the best storytelling I ever saw in wrestling was from ECW. They did a lot of great things down there that I don't think a lot of people paid attention to. And if you look back and watch it, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on and a lot of good stories being told. Yeah, man. I mean, obviously it's not for everybody, but like wrestling's like any other art. It's subjective. And, you know, I know what I like and I know what I wanted to do. And, you know, I got trained by three people of uh, vastly different styles uh, under the CCW Academy. And, you know, in the end, it made me more well-rounded for sure. Yeah. I mean, you, something you just said that you, you've always kind of said that wrestling is an art form. Yeah. Exactly, man. You know, there's no other way to really explain it. I can't force people to become fans of it. I know what I like. If you like it, that's cool. If you don't, I'm not going to fall. Yeah, there's tons of different styles for different It's kind of like music, dude. You, you know, not everyone listens to the same genre. Exactly. It's like any other art. Oh, definitely. I mean, I remember growing up, at ECW was kind of the one thing that I really enjoyed outside of the WWE and WCW. Um, prior to, you know, 1999 when they closed. Yeah, dude, it was great. I used to get tapes from my next door neighbor because he was old. I was only like 14 at the time when I started getting these tapes and he would just, I would watch them. And I was, like you said, like, I didn't know like some of the stuff that was going on over in Japan, what like, you know, those barbed wire matches were like over there or like, oh, uh, what was the one that they did? the Their actual Inferno match from Japan where, you know, the original. Uh, exploding ring. Yeah, where the original Iron Sheik had third degree burns all over his body and went into a coma. Like when I saw that for the first time, I, you know, I, I was like, okay, ECW, that's not as extreme as I thought. Pushing some boundaries. <laughs> so, how, yeah, man, Sheik, what a legend. Oh, man, all that fire, though. Then, then you see like the one between Kane and The Undertaker and the WWE where it's just like a little ring of fire around the outside <laughs> of the ring. And you're like, really? That's your Inferno match? <laughs> throwback how much time did you have actually between training and actually debuting started in like the end of june I had my first match on my birthday in December. about six months till my first match i mean you, you don't stop training though you, know, you, you don't just have your first match and that's it it's like any other sport you got to keep training or you're gonna regress uh yeah so about six months so that, that's not that's not too long actually you just you got you got there and started going right away they trusted me with it, my trainers. I mean, when you got like a clear passion for it, you you obviously going with yeah. your whole heart into I, it. I've always wanted to do it. You know, the goal was one match. If I have one match, this whole thing's a success. You know, I'm almost three years later, and I'm still still going, still doing new things. You're making a career out of it. You know, more or less, trying to. Kind of go through your first match for us. Um, we kind of like to ask. Terrifying. That. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So I didn't know what my first match was until the day of. Um, <laughs> Jeez. I knew that I was debuting on my birthday about two weeks prior. That's a pretty sweet um, present. <laughs> so I get there and, I, you know, I'm, I'm worried because it's fucking terrifying. I get there and I find out. We found out probably about 20 minutes before the, the show started. Yeah, all I remember is being really, really nervous. And, you know, for good reason, honestly. If this was the one match that I was ever going to have, I wanted it to be, like, memorable at least. And in retrospect, I mean, it's like anyone else's first match. Kind of sucked. But, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I, I'm still very proud of it, just based off the fact that it was my first match. and It was the first step to dream fulfillment for me. Yeah, I mean, that's got to feel pretty surreal to... So wild. Yeah. <laughs> so what what was your first match? Uh, I teamed with Penelope Ford against Connor Claxton and Frankie Picard. So it was a tag match with uh, three other people that I trained with regularly, which is definitely comforting. Yeah, that makes it probably a little easier to get into it. You don't have all of the spotlight on you. Yeah, exactly, man. Um, yeah, we're all doing our own things right now and it's cool it's really cool to see now, connor's just in the finals of tournament of death uh, frankie just won a title like a week or two ago and forge traveling everywhere now it's awesome so you still keep in touch with those guys yeah definitely we're all cool i mean even though i moved 1500 miles away from the rest of them i still talk to them pretty regularly like if i'm back in town it's like we haven't missed a beat it's, the, it's almost like family. It's definitely like family, dude. You know, for the most part, I, I talk to everyone I trained with regularly. And that's got to be another part of it that's rewarding. Not only do you get to do something that you love, you get to meet people who are doing something that love the same thing, doing the same thing that you love, and you're able to connect with them, build bonds, and, you know, create friendships that are going to last forever. Yeah, it's killer, man. It's killer. Met some people that I certainly wouldn't, have otherwise met and you know i'm closer with them than a lot of other people i've met throughout my life yeah no definitely from doing the one interview and listening to the other episodes like the wrestling community is super tight-knit like behind the scenes and everything it seems like yeah for sure i mean not everyone gets it you know what i mean not everyone gets pro wrestling like, people are like, oh, why do you do this? You know, it's fake, right? And I'm just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> just, just, you know, pay attention. Fake's a stupid word. Everyone's, you know, everyone's had an injury in wrestling, minor or major. So don't call it fake. It's not fake. Like, right? we, I mean, like we said earlier, it's an art form. You're, you're out there. It's you're an art per- form. You're exactly. performing. It's very physical, too. Right. Well, I, I'll, I like to liken it to, like, extreme sports. Like, when they go and do a run like BMX, snowboarding, skateboarding. They've practiced that run thousands of times before. They've done that. They've choreographed that stunt thousands of times. It's not fake if they fuck it up. That's it. Yeah. That's it, man. I still need to get back to later. (laughs) Wrestling's not not choreographed. uh, Like, oh, I mean, it's not heavily choreographed like, like extreme sports are by any means. But yeah, your point pretty much stands though. Well, yeah, them, you know, to, them to do work. It. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. But no, no, no worries, man. It's a work, but I mean, <laughs> fuck, have respect for it. You got to respect the art form. Exactly. As a fan, my biggest my biggest problem is is I think there's too many people out there, especially that are fans, who think that they know everything. And it's rough, man. <laughs> I think they. I was one of those people though, so. Um, but you went out. Why and did lie? It. I, I learned the hard way, and you right. know I, I I love the fact that I learned it the hard way. But how many of those guys would never do what you do? Is the point, you know? Oh, dude, oh, the, the ones that talk the most shit are the ones that uh, have always wanted to do this but just never have. It's almost like yeah, they can't do it. So anybody who's trying to do it, we're not. We're gonna hate on them because it's easier to hate on them than support somebody who's doing what we want to do. That's it, man. Just like anything else, there's too much negativity. There's, there's always going to be haters. Yep. I, I hate the word haters personally, but <laughs> like, it, it's just it, like anything else, any other art form, anything, period. There's always so much negativity for so little reason. 
and you know that extends to this like people talk about what they hate and they try and tear each other down rather than talking about what they love exactly. and trying to plug that and that's what it's got to be all about i mean you know you can spend all day talking about what you hate and you're where you're going to get nowhere if you sit there and you know focus on what you love and progress you'll get somewhere with it that's it that's it either give it a shot or don't and you can be a fan and you're entitled to your opinions just don't pass those opinions off as facts that's why when I, you know, I watch wrestling, like I like to go in there with the idea that I genuinely as a fan, I don't know anything else outside of the fact that I enjoy it. There you go, man. And I try to leave everything else at the door. I mean, that's pretty much what happens every time I watch it. Yeah. It, it works best when you have suspension of disbelief. But yeah, no, like, I, I like it. I liken it to a film. You get to sit there and watch Transformers and, and be like, well, robots have never fist fight each other. Right. The fuck out of here. No, you're not going to do that. Just go in, suspend your disbelief, and enjoy it. But, yeah, I mean, it'd be fun to see a robot jump from the top of a building and land on another robot. Of course. Absolutely. Do I know it's CGI? <laughs> yes. Am I going to say it's CGI? No. Do I care? It still looked cool. It's exactly what I was picturing. <laughs> exactly, man. So you said you had three different trainers uh, down at CZW. Out of all of them, who was most influential to you? Oh, man. I... Uh... They all were in their own ways. DJ Hyde gave me, you know, gave me some pretty big shots at CZW. I wrestled him at their biggest show of the year in 2015, um, Cage of Death. Uh, you know, we had a match. And that was one of those goals that I had that I never really thought that I'd get to achieve. And not only did I achieve it, I got to, uh, I got to win that match in front of, you know, 1400 people it's pretty surreal yeah i was in uh, i was in tournament of death so oh, i was non-tournament at tournament of death this year again thanks to dj uh drew gulak man <laughs> i could do a whole podcast just putting him over no fly zone uh, <laughs> that is so you know drew even when i forgot about the dream you know i said like it was always in my mind obviously but you know, at some point you realize, hey, maybe this isn't, you know, this isn't feasible. This isn't realistic. He never, ever, ever let me forget it. You know, he was on all these uh, events that I go to and I'd talk to him. We were friendly, you know, buy shirts, whatnot. And he was always like, well, when are you going to come down to the academy? When are you going to come down to the academy? And it just never lined up. But when it did line up, he was there. He was there for support. He was there for training. And, yeah, he was there to teach me the right way. And uh, third trainer is Preacher Phineas James. And Preacher is, he's a father figure to me in wrestling, essentially. I trained with him once a week time in the academy. Now, if you screwed up, he'd tell you you screwed up, point blank. But he'd also uh, fix the problem, uh, whether it took one time or a hundred times. He had to have achieved. Uh, honestly, he had achieved sainthood uh, training me sometimes because, fuck, especially at the beginning, you know, it, it took a while for me to get a lot of things down, and he just never gave up. And, yeah, I, I talked to all of them uh, fairly regularly because, again, it, it comes back to respect, and it comes back to them essentially being my family away from my family. So, I mean, picking one, I can't pick one. All right, fair enough. Makes sense. You can't really they're three totally different people and I learned three, you know, different lessons from them. But it, it makes sense why you were so prepared in such a short amount of time as you had three really good teachers focused on you getting good. Yeah, man. I mean, aside from them, there were also, uh, you know, guys from the company that would swing by the school. Uh, Black G's was a tremendous help. O'Gacy definitely was. A thousand different people. You know, it, it takes more than just your trainers to uh to make it yeah uh, i don't want to start naming people because i'll inevitably leave someone out and i i'll feel bad so I'm, I'm listening to this back and i remember who i left out but yeah man it, it takes an army and it's it's worth it well, we're definitely glad you have that i mean it's awesome to see somebody especially from you know the best little binghamton endicott area do something more than just sit around in Binghamton and Endicott and, yeah, right away. I'm not quite John Jones, man, but you know. 
Well, that well might, that's, that's probably a good thing. Yeah, man. we <laughs> we have somebody to be proud of, George. Yeah, man, uh, I'm trying. Yeah, no, I, I, I you said, know I wrestled in, I wrestled in Binghamton about four or five times. I don't think I ever won a match in Bing, but that's okay. So yeah. means I have to come back, right? Yeah, no, definitely come come claim a title up here. That's it. Yeah, I'll work you, on it. You'll have the two biggest fans in the audience for that one. That's we can, it. Man. We can do a studio in there. We'll, we'll get your <laughs> we'll get your opponent in the studio. We'll do a nice shoot interview beforehand. That's it. So you did Let's do you, it. You did spend some time in Excite Wrestling. Tell us what those guys are like. I've gone to a couple of their events, and they they put on a really good show. I also think the Binghamton crowd might be a special one, just in general. Yeah, they're a lot of fun, man. Um, I've known Johnny Moose for years, probably since, I don't know, 2011 or 2012. Uh, actually, when I was in college at BCC, um, he was best friends with one of my uh, my, my public relations professor. So uh, he'd come in, he'd talk to us and whatnot. So I didn't really know him then, but I knew he was a big wrestling fan. This is before Excite started. Uh, so uh, let's see, I think... This is uh, CDW's last show at the ECW Arena before it closed. This is back like January 2012. I see Moose is there and I see he's flyering. I don't know what he's flyering for, so I grab one and it was for 3DW, which uh, which turned into Excite Wrestling. I was visiting home in uh, March of 2012 when that show uh, went down and. You know, Moose saw me, we talked, and we talked. And we were friends, you know, we became friends anyway. So when I started training, I, I shot him a text. You know, we, we discussed it. And then, you know, I had my first matches. And just under a year uh, into wrestling, he ran a show uh, in December 2015. I, it was part of an eight-person tag. Uh, you know, I, I plugged it on every form of social media I could possibly have. I got a lot of people from, uh, from high school, and, you know, from college to show up. And by, just by saying, hey, this is the thing I never shut up about. Please come. <laughs> and it worked. So kind of elaborate on us, you know, we're called the gimmick table. You know, tell us who George Gatton is. Uh, George Gatton is indestructible. I'll say that right off the bat. Indestructible. Um, I'm George Gatton, the little engine that could. George Gatton has, has more guts than brains and a Napoleon complex. All right, girl, Matt, get that down because that's all going on the uh, cover for this episode. That's where we're <laughs> right, that's where recording. It's already down. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's up. Well, bad. <laughs> it's up. <laughs> Do you see what I have to deal with? I've known him for almost twenty years. Uh, I'm not really <laughs> any different. No, he, he probably hasn't changed at all in the 10 years that I've known him. Couldn't tell you, man. I'll tell you when I'm back in town. So what are some of your favorite moves to perform? If you can do anything in the ring to anybody, what do you like to do? Uh, I'm a big fan of chopping people, man. I know it's simple, but I sure like chopping people. Um, more recently, I uh, started doing moonsaults more and more. I was never much of a high flyer, despite being small, but I, I figured I'd add one in. Uh, I, I got to plug my finisher. Well, I got a couple of them, but my uh, the hit machine, Steve Tooth, tooth an overhand shop. Yeah. Ouch. I've gotten I've gotten to beat a couple notable people with that one, in a couple great places, and then you know, my I think my favorite, if I had to pick one favorite move to reform it. It's probably the acid drop. I was a big uh, Spike Dudley fan for forever, really, probably since 01. Uh, so, you know, once I started wrestling, that's just my homage to him. Okay, because that, that was actually what my next question was, because I saw that in your Four Corners of Pain match, and that was probably my, my highlight of the match. So what's going through your head doing that? <laughs> what's going through my head is there's a, a fucking pane of glass with razor blades on it. You know, at, at that point, you're in a death match. There's, there's no turning back. Uh, you know, I, I went that far. I had to make it count, really. So I, I just grabbed Jimmy Lloyd by the head, ran up the ropes, and dropped him through it. So just elaborating on that match itself, is there a point in that match where the pain just stops and you don't feel, you know, the glass, the light bulb? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. 
Um, for me, that moment came right after Jimmy Lloyd hit me in the, the face with tubes for the first time. <sighs> like I caught him at roughly the same time. Um, you know, I felt it initially, and then it just disappeared. It's really hard to explain. It just disappeared. That was right before you guys were kind of like doing the whole little Star Wars gimmick where you would, you know, swing your sword and you would jump. Dude, it was jump. it was right at the end of that when he hit me with the tubes. Okay. So, yeah, um, I, I was laughing yeah, my ass it's off. Just, it, it's just hard to explain. I felt it, and then adrenaline pretty much immediately kicked in. Not to say I was pain-free by any means, but it was it was toned down a bit just based off of uh adrenaline kicking up no i mean like in any sport like if you get hurt you you play through the pain like it, it just goes away on its own because you're not focused on it that's it your body just goes fuck it we're here yeah, <laughs> just like it. all right man you, you made it this far let's get through this yeah your body's full of its own like chemical painkillers and just shoots, exactly shoots you up with them and keeps you going that's it. So kind of tell us about, you know, you've, you've jumped relatively quick into the independent scene. Um, a lot of people know who you are. Kind of tell us, you know, how you've dealt with that success. Hey, listen, man, I have a long way to go. A long way. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to work for some great companies, but I'd be kidding myself if I said I didn't need much more work. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys being fans of my work. You know, it certainly helps motivate me, but I have a long way to go till I'm where I want to be. But uh, I just take it step by step, really. You know, every time I'm in the ring, whether it be for training or in a match, it's a, it's just a new learning experience. It's like you're in college and you're going to a, a lecture, except it's based off a topic that you have, you know, a great amount of passion for. Uh, so every time I'm in there, it's just schools in session. Who am I learning from today? Well, it's definitely good that you have that attitude because I, I feel like some people might just, in anything... You know, they get a little taste of success and they become, you know, in their minds, the who's who of the profession. The one thing I never want to be is delusional. <laughs> the second I'm delusional is the second I just call it a day. You know, I, I never, ever wanted to have any sort of ego. Um, I do my best to keep that in check. I straight up tell those closest to me that if they see me having an ego of any sorts to let me know. So I know it's time to, to just pack up and, and not do this anymore. You seem to be pretty humble about it, so. Yeah, man, I, I'm lucky enough to have learned some great people. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. and you're you're fulfilling your dreams, so obviously yeah. you're just gonna keep working at it until the you way can... the way I look at it is this could end at any time, right? Yeah. So say it ends. Say it ends right now. It's cool. Hey, people, you know, people liked my work. People, uh, people liked my my character. People liked my wrestling. All right. What what is the what does the real world have to say uh, away from wrestling? The bulldozer Matt Tremont gave me the, some of the best advice uh, I've ever received actually. Um he said that it's it's really cool that I'm over uh, in the world of wrestling, but it's more important that I'm over in the real world, that people like me for me and that I have a good reputation. And that's just something, you know, I've tried living by my entire life, just hearing it from someone who's mentored me and, and just taught me so much. Just, uh, you know, it reinforces that belief. It's good advice. Like, just don't get a big head. Just be a good person. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, now, a lot of people get sucked into this and they forget who they are. Do not want to be one of those people. I want to enjoy it and I want to have a good time, but I don't want to be consumed by it to the point where I can't recognize myself. Good for you, man. I mean, it seems to be paying off for you, though, because you found a good school, uh, you found great trainers, and you're really moving along with a lot of positive results and a lot of good people around you. So definitely, you know, if anybody's listening, you know, and they want to be a wrestler, that's a good takeaway that your attitude is very important to your success. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if you go in with a bad attitude, you're going to be humbled. You're going to be humbled very, very quickly. Uh, it's, it's not a baby's game. It's not for anybody to, to do. You need to have passion for it. You need to keep your eyes and your ears open and your mouth shut. If anybody could do professional wrestling, why isn't everybody doing it? Yeah, I mean, it's I'm, not for everybody, man. You got to put in the work; otherwise, uh, you're just gonna stink. Yeah, you're it's not, like anything else. You're not gonna catch me at the gym, and you're not gonna catch me jumping through any tables. That's it. But yeah, maybe one day we're we'll, doing both. <laughs> 
Maybe one day we'll catch Matt going through a table. 10,000 downloads. But George said I shouldn't do it. So, you know, but a challenge is a oh. challenge, George, and I can't go back on my word. No, he's doing it if it happens. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if he made a promise, I'll just, uh, I'll turn my head or something. I just know what it feels like. I got thrown through a table uh, in Ottawa, Ontario back in 2015. I wrestled a guy named PCP Crazy Fucking Manny. Uh, <laughs> that was and fun. <laughs> did he smoke PCP beforehand, or is that just gay? Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, Manny's you a know. good dude. Uh, he's going to hate me for saying that. He runs uh, <laughs> IWS International Wrestling Syndicate out of Montreal, Quebec. And, uh, you know, I was uh, on a charity event uh, called Fighting Back, wrestling with cancer uh, up in Ottawa. And I had um, I had told the people organizing the event that I'd wrestle whoever they, they want me to wrestle. You know, they, they hit a certain uh, goal on their fundraiser beforehand. And they announced to me and to everybody else at the same time that I'd be wrestling PCP crazy fucking Manny. You know, man, he's one of the most hardcore wrestlers to ever uh, come out of Canada. So naturally, this was uh, Manny's rules match, an IWS oh, rules match. Yeah. And uh, yeah, towards the end, I got a little uh, overzealous and a little cocky. He caught me and he threw me through a table. You're not, you're not giving me very much faith that I'm going to survive, George. <laughs> hey, man, it's either uh, I tell you how it is or I lie to you. I'm a firm believer in this situation. You can lie to me and just tell me I'm going to feel great. Like, you know, butterfly. Hey, man, you'll feel great afterwards. Just don't quote me on that. <laughs> I'm going to come say, George, you said I was going to feel great. <laughs> I can't move. Yeah, poor dude. Just, yeah, make, make sure you cover your bed and trays of ice. I would not be a man of my word if I didn't do it. If we got 10,000 downloads and I don't do it, who's going to listen to the show after that? I, you know, back. But where are you at right now? Like 400. Okay. We're 4%. Oh, wow. But we've only been up for four days, so, you know. We're we're four uh, percent at a four well, day rate. I don't know. At not, this rate in what a hundred days you'll be good. Yeah. I gotta start doing like crunches or something. Oh boy. Yeah, man. Wear a bubble jacket. <laughs> I just cover my entire body in bubble wrap. Yeah, cover the inside in bubble wrap and then cover the outside of that in like a starter jacket. Nobody'll know, they'll just think I'm really bulky. I wonder man. why I only weigh hundred and fifty pounds. I'm sure you can find a starter jacket somewhere, right? I mean, he definitely doesn't even weigh more than the table would. <laughs> oh, maybe it won't break and it'll hurt you. Even <laughs> you just more. bounce off it. <laughs> oh god. Fuck it's it. Like me at, at Tournament of Death, uh, towards the end, I don't know if you caught it. Um, Jimmy Lloyd set up like a, a TV onto two chairs and he overshot and I just ate shit on the grass. I yeah. thought you might have overshot yeah. that a little bit. Just uh <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Just go through the table. Do not hit the ground. Yeah, you ground. were kind of out Just, of that for after. <laughs> it it's very unforgiving. It's the best way I could put it. It hurts. So I should probably buy the table dinner first, you know. Yeah, buy the table dinner first. Get some roses. That's it, man. Take it out for a nice steak dinner. Never call her again. <laughs> Dorothy Mantooth is a saint. <laughs> but you've had a lot of opportunities for gold. How does that feel? You debuted at Wrestle Circus fighting EC3 for the Ringmaster Championship. What was that like? Uh, wild, wild. He had an open challenge. He got to, he got to essentially choose his first opponent, and uh, it was me. Who uh, a total of zero people, but like three people in Texas knew who I was. <laughs> it's a new territory, man. From the Northeast, quite quite a ways away and you know ec3 being a you know former impact wrestling champion former uh, competitor in the wwe world travel it was just awesome you know it, it's humbling thinking about it right now it, it really changed uh, the direction i've gone in uh down in in uh texas period what uh what do you mean well, you know, I showed up as George Gatton, and I left that match as the trash man. Uh, you know, I was christened such by EC3. So he looked at me, and he said, you really don't have any sort of gimmick. Why don't you go to the back, find yourself a gimmick, and come back out? I ran to the back. I grabbed the little plastic trash can. Uh, <laughs> Christina Aguilera's dirty hit the speakers, and I came out. <laughs> I was rechristened the trash man. Uh, you know, for the next two months after that, I was uh, I was running with him. He hasn't been back since, but it looks like he will be returning soon. Uh, I believe September. He was announced for Wrestle Circus. 
Um, so you really just completely changed uh, the trage trajectory. I can't fucking speak to that. I'm sorry, guys. It's the trajectory okay. of, uh, of uh, my wrestling career down here. Yeah, no, because even at Wrestling Circus, you uh, you changed it up a little bit there, too. Yeah, Wrestle Circus is awesome, man. Uh, you know, all, all kayfabe aside, it's a great place to work. Yeah, I had a little, uh, had a little feud with the, uh, the owners and their family. I had the first and only hardcore match uh, in Wrestle Circus history back in April so far. You know, if I had my way. I, I could see that changing. Um, a few more you know, of those. It's just a lot of fun. There's a lot of freedom there. That locker room is just uh, incredible. Part of. There's so many uh, great people to learn from. Really, every month I try and do that. I mean, I got to finally catch Wrestle Circus Live on Twitch, and I got to say, it was fun to watch. Really awesome that you guys are doing something and giving it to the fans for free. Yeah, man. It's a, it's a, a monthly uh, experience for sure. Uh, next show is next Saturday, August 5th. I don't know if it'll be next Saturday by the time this drops, but August 5th. And if uh, if August 5th is already passed, then September 9th. This drops but, August uh, 1st, so yeah, we're yeah, good. Yeah, we'll be there before the 5th. Yeah, right. we're good for that. And then the 9th. Yeah, yeah check it out. All right. It's free on Twitch. Yeah, and Twitch is so. free too, so. Yeah, and the quality outside of when I was trying to download or, you know, send audio files of massive proportion. After that, my own stupidity perfect no glitches no issues with the stream didn't miss anything and that's awesome that it's quote cool. one it's not just free it's quality yeah for sure for sure it's pretty much uh, a flawless quality from what i've got it's probably my favorite for a wrestling promotion best hands down the best logo out there just for uh, yeah, aesthetically for sure. pleasing makes me just smile every time that i see it there you go yeah. man they're doing their job they had me hooked you can let them all know that that i you know I keep guys living on them big things up ahead you can tell. You can. I'm really glad to see that there's a lot of in, a couple into promotions coming out and really, you know, showing people that there's more than just what you're going to see on, you know, network television. Yeah, I mean, they're doing really big things, especially uh, considering the fact they haven't even been around for a full year yet. They debuted back in October, so we're we're looking at you know just about ten months. And they've, they've just grown at such a rapid rate. They have a great reputation amongst the uh, the performers as well. And for good reason. You know, they're they're disrupting professional wrestling in the best way possible. You know, they're, they're changing it for the better. They want to leave it better than it was when they arrived, really. Really, it's anybody's goal. Well, I know there was some heat with the whole donating money online. Yeah, but I feel like there was heat for it because somebody else didn't think of it first. Uh, honestly, what's... What's the difference between um, a voluntary uh, donation as opposed to, you know, buying a T-shirt that you might wear once or twice? Well, like, look at those people who, like, stream video games and stuff on Twitch, and they get money for that and everything. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, what's the difference? People just send them money, like, hey, right, here's, here's the money. I like it. watching your show. Said, hey, I'm enjoying this. But that's true capitalism it's, right there. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's helping the performers out. But again, we're not pressuring you to do it. It was completely voluntary, and it's it's just going to always be completely voluntary. Right, so people, I think people people took it the wrong way for whatever reason. And, you know, people there's always... not a whole lot to say about it. I'm not going to say people hate for no reason. You know, a lot of them were very passionate about their reasons. It just happened to be reasons that I, I uh, fundamentally disagree with. That's all. I see a lot of people buying shirts every month, and I don't see a lot of them, you know, wearing them every month. So why not? Uh, why not give them some sort of money in a, in a different sort of way? Right, and that's I'm, all. Exactly. And at the end of the day, if I enjoy a match that two performers put on, and I want to give you money, that's my choice. If I want to say thank that's you all, to that's you, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. In a monetary form, let me do that with my money. You ain't charging me anything to watch this show. It's good quality content, great to watch on your television. Here you go. Thank you. That's it, man. But, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion, and I'm exactly. not going to say they're wrong or they're right. But, you know, that's just how I feel. I definitely think it's the right attitude to have. So tell us just from for you, what are some of the challenges you faced since you started this journey? Wrestling as a whole? Yeah. Listen, man, you want to go out there and you want to get better, but not every match you have is going to be a five-star classic. I think uh, one of the hardest parts of that is... Uh, whether you want to or not, because I was guilty of this, even though uh, it doesn't really fall within my personality, you end up kind of comparing your path to those uh, those around you. And the thing is, no two paths are going to be the same. You 
could start at the same time at the same academy, but that doesn't mean anything. You know, the people I started with uh, all have various different paths than I do, but there were times where someone was advancing at a, at a faster rate than I was. And I was, you know, I'd question what I was doing wrong. But in retrospect, the answer was I wasn't doing anything wrong. You know, some people regress faster than others. Just how it is. It, it doesn't necessarily tie to work ethic or uh, or it just plays out like that sometimes. But once you get that, I think it becomes a lot easier. Good for you, man. Good for keeping a you know a level head through everything that you've done. Yeah. So you kind of yeah, realize yeah. like it's not all in your control. It's just you got to roll with the bunches, kind of. You have to. It's a series of challenges. But it's how you adapt to them that makes you better. That's it. How are you going to get better if you're not disrupted? Exactly. You need to get pushed. You got to you gotta always be striving. And again, like when you're watching somebody progress at a faster rate than you, that motivates you to want to progress harder. Yep. Imagine you're wrestling the same guy every night and nobody else. You're going to get better? No, you're Probably just not. Gonna stay the same. You're going to get complacent. I don't think you're going to get better. You wrestle different people from different areas, trained at different places you're gonna get better you're gonna learn one way or another not every style is the same and that's the beauty of this really they don't have to be the same you're telling a story let them tell theirs they meet up it's fucking awesome has there ever been a time when you just wanted to stop wrestling or has it been you know no matter the challenge you've kind of just faced it head on and said nope i'm gonna do this has there ever been a time you know where you just wanted to turn away and pack it up oh yeah man of course uh you know you got real life going on you know res- wrestling's been yeah, you know, good to me for the most part. Even so, I uh, I keep my priorities in order. You know, a lot of the times, I, there's an opportunity on the table, and I consider just just walking away. It's me speaking completely candidly. Uh, you know, it, it happens not super often, but it it happens. I mean, it's a you know, it's a stressful kind of line of work there. Yeah. I mean, it's not so much about the stress, it's just about having your priorities, that's all. Right, I mean, it's gotta be, you know, between training, you know, being on the road, it's it's time consuming, you know, this is your- Yeah, you're for giving, sure. You're giving your life to it, this has to be the number one thing, because if it's not the number one thing, then you're not going to succeed and be as successful as you want to be. That's what it comes down to, you gotta give it what you have. You definitely, you definitely have the right attitude, I think, to make it, you know, very far in this profession it's really cool to actually be able to you know over the last four this will be our fourth interview just to sit down with you guys and see how much you're no different than any of us except you just have the balls to get in a fucking ring and beat the hell out of each other for fun that's it man well who else have you interviewed if you don't mind me asking uh, we had seymour snot victor andrews and then our buddy out in oh, oregon yeah. wow uh Tectonic, he's really good. He's fun to watch. You should check him cool. out. Nice, nice. That's cool. People from all over the place, huh? Yeah, and uh, yeah, we met him on the internet. Yeah, I've been, I've become, a, I've become a Twitter machine yes. against my own, <laughs> own want. But it's cool now. You know, we've been doing really well, and now we have people actually asking to come on. So now I have a bunch of different emails I have to go through. So, but yeah, I knew as soon as Matt was doing this show, I was like, "Well, I'm definitely gonna reach out to George and see if he wants to be on here." Because that would be sweet, man. Thank you. No, thank you, man. We got a couple more questions here for you. Uh, Yeah, no worries. So, your favorite match as a fan of all time? Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker, Mania 25. That was the second one or the first one? I forget. I always. Oh no, it was the first one. First one. You think it's better yeah. than Steamboat versus Macho Man? I do. Okay. Dude, it's it's just a perfect match. It, it, I always argue with my friends because that's what they always say, so I just always throw Steamboat and Macho Man in there just to be... <laughs> Steamboat, Steamboat and Savage is awesome, too, yeah. but, you know... But they won't. 30 years later, it, it holds up just, you know, not as much as a match that, that's uh, eight years old and more of a modern style does. But I agree. I just, you know, because they, you know, automatically go to that match, I have to throw it in their face just to be that guy <laughs> you know there you go man you know, yeah what? michael's taker to me is just perfection here's a question do you think sean michaels should have broken the streak uh see i'm biased because sean michaels is my favorite wrestler of all time far none but you know i don't think michaels should have um it's kind of hard to say at the time when i was at mania 30 when brock broke the streak right see at the time why did he break the streak this guy's a part timer, but you know, three years later, it makes perfect sense that the most legit guy is gonna break, you know, this almost mythological streak. Um, so no, I don't think Michael shut up. Just to answer your question. Fair enough. All right. So one guy actively wrestling right now. I don't care what promotion they're in. Who would you like to wrestle? Dream match. Dream match. Any promotion. Any promotion from the world. Anything. Uh... 
Uh, I'll say Kevin Owens. All right. I've always been a big fan of his work. Yeah, I got to see him wrestle at the American Legion a couple times, you know? That's cool. Um, he's always been real cool with me, too. You know, I, I know him on a, on a personal level. You know, I don't, I, obviously, he's, he's very busy these days, so I don't hear from him uh, as much. But, All right. Uh, you know, he's messaged me several times, offering advice. And, you know, when I saw him uh, in Orlando, yeah, we, we discussed everything as well. He's he's just he's one of the realest dudes I, I've gotten to meet in or out of wrestling, and I, I've always been a fan of his uh, his brawling style. Yeah, that's that's really my favorite style to uh, to take part in. So, what better way than the face former Universal Champ, huh? <laughs> right, that would be a great match. Uh, Vic- Victor Andrews said that Kevin Owens is like the CM Punk of the WWE right now. Yeah, yeah I could see that. Yeah, he, it just uh, he's he's different than pretty much everyone else in the company. Like you said, the realist kind of guy out there. Yep, just uh, a disruptor again. I mean, when he premiered in the WWE, it was probably one of the best moments they've had in a really long time. When he made his, you know, walks movement. out, challenges John Cena, beats John Cena on pay per view, his yes. first match on the main roster. Just what? When he was when he was still U.S. champion, I would you know stand up and salute him every time. Of course, man. You know, he was my He's champion. The face of America. He he still is the face of America to me. Him and Kenny Omega combined. They can make a super title. <laughs> that's it. That, that, yeah. There's Matt dropping Kenny Omega into this. If I Kenny keep, Omega. If I keep mentioning his name, he'll come on the show, okay? <laughs> Kenny Omega is tremendous. He is awesome. Kenny Omega is probably the best wrestler in the world, in my opinion. Any messages for people out there who uh, want to become a wrestler? What would be your advice to them? Eyes and ears open, mouth shut. Try and uh, learn from everybody you possibly can because everybody in the industry has been uh, where you want to be. Every journey's different, so you're going to learn lessons from everybody. Uh, you know, some of them are going to be for the better, and some are going to be for the worse, but just, uh, just hustle and work your hardest. Go at it full force. Uh, it, it's worth it. Now, you mentioned August 5th and September 9th. Work updates coming up. Right. Circus, yeah. Anything August else? 5th featuring uh, Swirl Sky is the best versus Cody Rhodes, uh, possibly for the Ring of Honor World Championship, depending on if Kevin Condren can beat Brandy Rhodes earlier in the night. And are you on that show too? I will be uh, supporting Scorpio Sky and Kevin Condren in their conquests. So you're gonna you're gonna make an appearance on camera there? I will be there. You're gonna be a little be there. Be a little heelish again? You know, uh, I'm just doing my thing whatever that may be what happens happens right i'm just gonna listen i'm just there to be their cameraman okay now when can we see you in the ring again uh well i'm healing up from various injuries right now so uh, i'm looking at a september comeback but all depends on how much training i am able to do so that's first and foremost for me um but yeah we're looking at a september comeback okay. i'll keep you posted on the social medias definitely let us know tag yeah. us in that we will tweet it and we'll plug it on Appreciate the show it. as well. No problem, man. That's what we're here for. We just want to, you know, give you guys a platform to talk about because clearly Bats and I just love to hear our own voice, and <laughs> that's where this all started from. Yeah, but that's it's fun it, to man. promote people. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. It's just, well, we've gotten a lot of positive pe- feedback feedback from guys. Cool. And it's just, I think that's the best part of it, to see that you guys actually appreciate what we're doing. That's it. We're just name the game, dude. Yeah, get your names out there. Get more people. I mean... No such thing as too many fans. No, sir. All right, so now we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna unhinge the table. Yes, and that's metaphorically unhinging the table that he's gonna get thrown through someday. And we're gonna play a game because apparently yeah. games are fun. So we're gonna give you a wrestler, and we want you to tell us what their sitcom would be. It could be an existing what? sitcom, or like a name, or like you, yeah, just give us a name, like where they would a character they'd fit in. You know, just what would their TV show fit this okay wrestler. just like a made-up one or like one that already exists well whatever yeah okay there really aren't there's any no rules. rules yeah there's <laughs> this is no disqualification game okay right. sounds good so we'll start off with kenny omega uh you know weird i i almost feel like kenny omega would fit in more as a cartoon character okay. um i kind of see him on the new adventures of sonic the hedgehog if you remember that <laughs> <laughs> as what just as i don't know, one of sonic's buddies i know he's not a hedgehog or 
a flying squirrel with two tails. And I, just, I just feel like fit in there, just run really fast for whatever fucking reason. Yeah, you could give Robotnik a one wing angel. <laughs> that man, you just beat up uh, Dr. Robotnik. You had to give him a one winged angel. There you go. You actually listen to me when I talk. You you remembered the name of his finisher. Oh, only because that match we watched, they're like, one winged angel! One winged angel! I'm guessing that was Okada. <laughs> yes, I, I got Bat to sit through the whole hour long match. Dude. I was so happy. Wait, which one? The first one or the most recent one? Most recent one. Really? Okay. Yeah. And yeah, the first he, one. They're both just so good. When he hit the uh, when he hit the second or in the when he, in the second match when he finally actually hit the one wing angel, I thought he was gonna win right then and there. Yeah. And I watched it. I, I got up to watch it live because I I just didn't want to wait. And I'd gotten the app, and I was so excited for that. And when Okada put his freaking foot on the rope, I banged my hand so hard on the ground that it woke my girlfriend up upstairs. <laughs> She's like, Tremendous. I heard. She's like, I heard screaming and yelling. <laughs> I was like, sorry. I haven't seen any of the G one yet, actually. I haven't. It's because it's it's just so hard to watch. It's such a different you know, time I'm zone. Busy during the week, you get it though. I'll get on it though. Yeah, that's the one downside of doing all this is I haven't had time to actually like watch a lot of wrestling. I've been so busy preparing and getting stuff ready that it's like I do a wrestling podcast and I haven't watched wrestling in two weeks. There you go. It happens. All right, so. It. How about AJ Styles? AJ Styles. Uh, I feel like uh, uh, I'll take it back to the 90s, the land of short lived sitcoms. He fit in on Soul Man featuring Dan Aykroyd. Oh, okay. Is- all right. All right. Would he be the most? Uh, well, you know, AJ Styles is a known Christian. So why not put him with. Uh, so he'd be the priest that the wears Christians. gloves. Oh, God. When he hands out the communion. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he'd be like a like a Ned Flanders esque <laughs> neighbor of sorts. But he's always wearing gardening gloves. That's it, man. Hey there, hi there, ho there. <laughs> ask ask Bats how he feels about AJ Styles gloves. They don't want none. <laughs> no, I just, I just I don't I don't I think he should just take them off once in a while. He's always wearing them. No, man. He's the smartest person for wearing those. If you want to listen to the Victor Andrews episode. He, he tells everybody why AJ Styles wears those gloves. So you all can listen well, to that. I'm not going to say anything. So why do you think he's the greatest for wearing those gloves? It's just smart, man. People tape their wrists so they don't break them. Why not cover your hands up? I mean, that among other reasons that I don't want to break the fourth wall any more than I already have. Well, I mean, he's not catching any footballs. So, All right, so what about your... Uh... Trainer, Drew Gulak, where would you put, what show would you put him on? I think Wings would be good with the whole Drew no Gulak deserves zone. his own show. What would you call Wings? it? Wings, is that you said? Well, yeah, because No Fly Zone. <laughs> All right, that's my yeah, favorite. Sure. That is my favorite part of 205 Live. <laughs> All right, I just, I fucking love it. I'm that. not lying, no high flying. <laughs> Safe and sound, feet on the ground. <laughs> you could be like the air traffic controller. <laughs> Or you could do a show where he's Drew Gulak like a... deserves his own sitcom. Sit- I can't throw him on some other sitcom. Right. He needs to have his own. Could he be like his own sitcom where he's like a TSA agent? <laughs> yeah, why not? We'll call it... I'll, I'll rip off uh, the name of one of his uh, old signature moves. I'm going to call it uh, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> he could be like an air marshal in the future. That's it, man. It's just him and Edward James <laughs> almost hanging out. <laughs> This is why this is the funnest part of the show, because just the ridiculous shit that people can come up with. We need a woman. Uh, let's do Charlotte. Charlotte. Okay. Uh, designing women. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> why not? As who? Dude, she'll just like, she'll what? be part of that clique of all those broads. Uh, all those southern all, bells. You're going to have to familiarize us a little bit with this show that... <laughs> I've never seen. I think the question is, how do you even know so much about designing women? Bro, I know plenty about sitcoms that everyone has forgotten about, <laughs> including designing women. Apparently, what is this show? I mean, I remember yeah, designing like, women, but I didn't. yeah, it was like a late '80s sitcom featuring a bunch of southern designing women. Strong, independent though. You got to remember that. Strong, yeah. independent a Golden women Girls that did not thing? need no man. They were younger than the Golden Girls. Though. Oh, so you, okay. yeah, they weren't Golden. 
was. It was like the prequel to the Golden Girls. Like what? Uh, I do love the Golden Girls. Uh, though, quite a bit. Betty White. I got for uh, for Christmas. I got a Christmas sweater that just says "Dreaming of a White Christmas" and it's a picture of Betty White. My sister for my birthday bought me a pair of uh, Converse style high tops with the Golden Girls on them. You win. <laughs> you win. Uh, hands down, beats my sh- my sweater. They're tremendous shoes, let me tell you. That is awesome. I would never wear them. Oh, I wear them once in a while. Pull them out for special so occasions. I get reactions out of people. <laughs> I know um, Chris Hero, now Cassius Ono in NXT, really enjoyed them, as did ACH. I want a pair now. Yeah, they're pretty tremendous. All right, man. Uh, we'll let you get going. We're going to... Awesome. All right, man. I appreciate you guys uh, having me on. We'll be in touch. Absolutely. Sounds good. We'll be following your wrestling career as it progresses, and hopefully we'll get you back on the show for another interview. You want to talk? Let me know. You want to talk about being creepy right now? Well, if you could see my face, it'd look creepy, but it's just to make that voice that I was doing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, I need some new friends. (laughs) All right, man. Thank you. All right, guys. That was the fourth episode of the gimmick table we're so glad you could join us here today we had a lot of fun getting to interview somebody that came from you know binghamton vestal endicott whatever you want to fucking call it it's all one just a local boy local boy so that's really good and followed his dreams you can follow your dreams too kids yeah exactly proof that anybody out there no matter who you fucking are if you believe in your fucking self can do what you fucking want to do and you don't gotta fucking live life as you're told to live by everybody else anyways Thank you again for joining us. We had a lot of fun. We hope you enjoyed the show. Get over to GimmickTablePod.com and enter our contests and listen to all our episodes. If you have iTunes, get on iTunes, subscribe, give us those five-star ratings. Actually, be genuine and give us the rating you fucking think we deserve because that's what we want. We want your feedback. Yeah, we're not in this for the glory, man. We're just in it to spread the word. And get ten thousand dollars so Matt can go through a table. That's all you care about. That's the only reason you're part of this show. That's the only reason I'm helping you is I want to put you through a table. I'm not gonna put you through a table, but I want to watch you get put through a table. You know, even though you want me to go through a table, the positivity in your voice makes me want to go through a table. Have a good night, folks. Thank you for listening.